Good afternoon again. It's uh, archivist David Thomas at uh, Cornwall Record Office at Truro. Welcome to our further session of David's Dazzling Documents. There will be one more after this before the e uh, end of the year, so this is the penultimate one. What have we got today? Well, we're going to have a look at some of, some of because we have vast amounts of the building plans for Cornwall's Cathedral here in Truro. And Cornwall's Cathedral is particularly significant because it was the first Protestant cathedral built in the UK in Holy since the Reformation. We have some fabulous plans, but we also have a full photographic record of its, dis of its construction in various photographs and albums that we also hold here at Truro. Let's have a look and see what's on the table. And the cathedral was um, begun in 1880 when the foundation stone was laid and it incorporated the south aisle of the old parish church of St Mary at Truro, which actually Bishop Benson, Truro's first bishop, did not wish to keep. He called it tinkering with old stones. But the cathedral was begun in 1880 and by 1887, the choir or the eastern section was complete. And the building committee hired one of the greatest Gothic revival architects in Britain, the architect John Loughborough Pearson, who'd worked on many great churches. Pearson tried out his ideas as a prototype for Truro Cathedral on the huge parish church of St Augustine at Kilburn in London, where he developed the ideas. And he brought them to fruition in his masterpiece, which was the cathedral here at Truro. And the building plans do differ slightly from as the cathedral was completed. For instance, here we have the octagonal chapter house. And this was never actually built because of lack of money and for other reasons. And also a set of cloisters which would have connected the cathedral across to the old um, Truro Cathedral School on this side of, of the site. And the, the, the chapter house that's there today is actually a modern one built in the 1960s. On the second plan, we see Pearson's draftsmanship in all its glory. The detail on this plan is simply stunning. He has recorded every detail, for example, on the crenellation and the windows of the old parish church of St Mary, on his new south porch, and in the, the windows, the rose windows, which are such a feature of the cathedral. The draftsmanship is out of this world. Each of these plans is signed and by him personally, John um, Pearson R.A., um, Brownfield Street in London. So they are the real deal, and they have been rebacked onto new backing to actually protect them. And in this third plan, we see the whole of the eastern end of the great cathedral as conceived by Pearson. Again, here you have the east window of the south aisle of the old church of St Mary, that had been restored in 1769 and a tower built, but it was the only bit that remained. The rest, the other two aisles, were swept away. And here we can see his vision for the octagonal chapter house. It would have fitted in beautifully with the present cathedral in its early English style. One of the features of Truro, and you'll see this when you come to Truro and do your shopping and stand in High Cross, is this wonderful west facade built very much like the uh, cathedrals over in France. It can, for instance, as a cathedral similar to this. But this is Pearson's vision of the West Front, and this is as it is today, with the exception of this archway that leads into the cloisters. This is now the site of the cathedral cafe. The two Western Towers were completed in 1910, and they completed the cathedral as built as it is today. And then finally, on um, this last plan that's on the table is Pearson's northern side or northern aspect of the cathedral. And again, you can see the wonderful detail, for example, of this rose window in the north transept. So just to recap, uh, this section is the section built in 1880 to 1887 and was consecrated when the cathedral was consecrated in 1887. Uh, then came this, um, the nave, 1903, and the western, the middle tower, the central tower, which is 232 feet tall. And then in 1910, we had the, the two western towers, um, the northern of which holds the cathedral's peal of bells, 
and the tenor bell of that weighs 33 hundredweight. It's a fantastic record. This is only a small selection of the plans that we have and they make Truro Cathedral a really special building to study because of the vast amount of archive material there is on it. We hold two collections from the Dean and Chapter and also, as I said earlier, a vast amount of photographs. It's a really special building and it's iconic to Cornwall, so if you want to know more about it, we are the place to come to here at the Record Office to study more about it and learn more about its the fascinating history of its construction. <laughs>